What's up, people? Perry here with episode number 15. And this episode may be a little bit of a shorter episode because because I have a bunch of things going on right now. And I am trying to get them all in order. And so, yeah, that's one of the things that uh, comes with real life is you got to deal with other things and um but one of the things that i am working on right now is uh well it's youtube related and it's getting underway with uh, that new survival series just got to put together some ideas and try to figure out exactly what i want to do oh hey the rain stopped that's nice the um does anybody know and i'm sure there's gonna be some smart commenter out there that's gonna figure this one out but how do you stop the rain from falling uh, is there some sort of command? Because I know I know about the daylight thing, right? And I got stopped in this world. But I'm not too sure how to stop the weather. Because every time, I'll tell you this, every time I go to, um, I, I, I can do the, the toggle downfall thing, right? And any time I do that, it always comes back with, with like a vengeance. And it always like stays for a lot longer than it usually does and I don't know why that is I don't know if that's like a random thing or or whatever but yeah for, for, for now I I've just just let the rain just come down just whenever but uh, if, if you know why or what to do um, to, to get rid of it that'd be great so leave a leave a comment down below that'd be really awesome but um, for this episode what we're going to be doing is we are going to continue on with this right here the uh the oasis project and what i'm thinking what we're gonna do is uh, i've you can see here from the last episode i've changed some things up we'll, we'll go over that in a little bit but you can see here this little monstrosity that is my mc edit work um there's a there's a little comment that uh, said that i should uh talk a little bit about the scaling of this thing and um, I don't think I explained it properly as to how I use MC Edit in order to scale it down to this size. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go into MC Edit, and I'm just going to show you a little, a little. It's not really a tutorial, but more of a like a brief tip. So I'll see you there in just a bit. And so we here we are in MC Edit. Uh, this is actually the first time I've actually recorded anything that is not Minecraft. So how about that? First time for everything, right? Um, so the thing that we have here, I have a little mountainside here. And oh, by the way, the person that uh, mentioned in the comments about um, scaling down the, uh, the thing over here, the Oasis project, uh, was uh, Victor 3D Gamar. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. But basically, he says, how did you scale it down with a filter by hand? Please maybe show in one of your episodes because I'm in need of it. So Victor, this one's for you. All right. And it was really something that uh, was kind of bothering me about that episode, how I didn't explain properly how to scale things down. Um, but this is something that I think I can easily grasp and hopefully be able to show you uh, without too much trouble. So in MC Edit, um, basically what we want to do, uh, in order to scale this down, we need to select it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to select a block. That block will do just fine. And then we want to drag our selection tool. You see how it drags around like this? And basically, we want to encompass the whole thing. Now, I haven't done that yet, um, but I want to extend these boxes out. And in order to do that, you can see how it lights up when you put your cursor over there. You can select and you can drag it out just like that. And then do the same thing over here, just like that. Um, alternatively, if you want to do some fine tuning, there's these little nudge buttons right here and all it does is that you see you can see these um this uh blue box right here and this yellow box right here and they kind of correspond 
with these colors. So in order, if you wanted to say move this box around, so it just moves this box and it kind of alters the selection area. Uh, I can click and hold. You can see, you can read what it says right there. Click and hold and while using the movement keys, you can nudge it. So just like that, see how I'm moving, you know, to the left and then to the right, and then I can go forwards and backwards and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, that's how you use the selection tool. But the next thing that we want to do is we want to shrink this down. So all we have to do is we go over to the clone tool right here. So we'll click that. And then here's the little menu pop up that comes with the uh, clone tool. And what we want to do is we want to go down to scale factor. And this is the key right here. Uh, basically, you go over the mouse. You can you can go over with your mouse wheel and then you can you you can scroll up and down depending on what you want. 1.0 is basically the same size. So if I nudge this over again using the nudge tool, see I'm creating a copy. I haven't pasted it into the world just yet. So it's kind of free floating around like this. But with the scale factor, uh, 1.0 means it's the same size. You scroll down and basically you make it 50%. Or you can actually scroll up 2.0, you make it double the size. So that's a very handy tool and it saves a lot of trouble when uh, I'm trying to um, make some things in Minecraft. Um, you can also fine tune it by just clicking on it and you can probably just delete it and then name your size basically that you put 40 percent or 0.4 of the original size uh and things of that nature but you know for starters it's always good to just do something like that just use the the score wheel but what we've done here is we've uh, reduced it down by about 50 percent hit the clone tool ta-da just like that all done now i will tell you it's not perfect uh, there's certain things in the algorithm that um, you know don't allow for exact copying or exact scaling um, but that you know it's it, it saves a lot of work let's put it that way it saves a lot of work so that's for you Victor here we are back in our planning world and as you can see I've made a few changes so let's go over them actually just one big change and that is the honeycomb pattern you see here the uh, the hexagonal pattern I guess you could say um, the, the reason why I made it like this and in the last episode I had it a little bit smaller I I think it was like something like you know this size watch me aggressively place blocks <laughs> um, yeah it was something like like that um, it's not square. Uh, I know these are not squares, but uh, you, you get the idea. The, this, the, these honeycomb patterns are a lot bigger than they were before. And the reason why I decided to do this, as I just get rid of this because uh, it annoys me. <laughs> um, one of the things that uh, I was thinking about after I finished the last episode was the fact that the uh, the honeycomb pattern is supposed to be some some sort of a, a roof structure for this, right? So I didn't want to be walking into pillars, you know, every so often. I wanted it to be a little bit more open. So, you know, what I was going for here uh, was just to kind of open up the space a little bit, uh, not to have too much clutter. I mean, you can see here this was the this is the original pattern, right? And, you know, with the new pattern, I think we'll get a, a bit more of an open space. But the next thing that we want to do, and you can see I've kind of already got it started, is we want to work out the roof pattern. Now, in order to do that, what I am thinking is that we need to start off simple by putting down pillars just like so my my egg you, you, you could probably hear my aggressive uh, clicking of the mouse button I apologize if that annoys you a little bit <laughs> I have yet to figure out a way to eliminate that from uh, 
my recordings but um but yeah you're just gonna have to bear with it uh i'm just putting down some pillars right now just to kind of get an idea of what i want to do so here we go um so basically what i'm thinking is that i want to add in a little archway here and so by adding an archway here and then another one on the diagonal here another one here and so on and so on so I'm going to get started on that. I'm going to try and figure out some sort of pattern that I like. Again, this is all in the planning phase, so don't expect it to be exactly as it is when we go off, off into the main world, but uh, at least it'll give some idea as to what I want. So I'll see you in a bit. So one of the things that I've been learning about during this whole process of planning out a honeycomb pattern was the fact that uh, it's a little bit difficult when you're trying to sort out a pattern like this, especially when you're trying to figure out one, what size you want, and two, uh, just what type of shape uh, you want the honeycomb to be in. And I was pretty lucky in that, um, you know, you look online and you, you can kind of figure out from different pictures uh, how to exactly do it. But uh, this was basically done through trial and error and the key that I've found in order to match up these patterns, and there's probably a much easier way of doing it, but this is this is how I figured it out, was that this side over here from here to here has to match up with the opposite corner here and here. And so when you think about it, this line right here takes up space over here because you're not, you know, you're not uh, copying and pasting it like straight over, right? You're not moving it east, west, or north, south. It's a bit of a, um, yeah, you go on an angle and you can see in the patterns here how one of the hexagons starts here, but the next one next to it is not right here. It's actually up here. So the, the key is to match these two ends together. Um, it's just a little thing that I had to, figure out when uh, developing these patterns because if you don't do it correctly you can end up with uh, gaps and stuff so I hope that was a little bit of a good explanation uh, if it sounds any uh, anything like how it sounds in my head uh, I, I'm sorry I apologize but uh, uh, I'm just trying to figure out exactly how to explain it to you guys um, but this is the this is basically the process that I had to go through in order to come up with something like this. But move it on, move it on from that little convoluted explanation. Um, this is what I came up with in terms of what we want to do in the Oasis area. Um, yeah, it, this will make more sense once I put it in there, but um, I just wanted to kind of get an idea of what I wanted to do. Um, lots of different patterns going on here so you can kind of see what I'm going for um, each honeycomb will kind of be like its own area so we have the middle here uh, designated by this one block right here uh, this will be where the uh, the mob system is and other mob collecting activities will go on in here and then as we move off to the outer edges here we'll basically be using them as kind of individual workspaces so i can work on one project in this area here and then uh, another project over here in these open spaces but uh, yeah so the next step is to kind of get it into that um, into the oasis uh, planning project over there and i'll see you there in just a bit here we go, we've placed it into the little planning area that we, we've been working on. And I kind of like the way it's turned out. I've added in these uh, blue, like, what is this, light, light blue? Yeah, light blue, light blue wool into these uh, empty spaces here just to kind of give you an idea of well kind of define the arches as they are and I think in the real build what we'll end up doing is putting some sort of pattern in there because right now uh, it, it doesn't really leave room for uh, any sort of pattern and it's the planning phase too so we won't worry too much about that right now just want to get the overall feel 
but yeah i'm kind of i'm kind of liking how the space is working out um maybe i can show you a little bit of the view from here yeah i'm liking I, i'm really liking how this is uh turning out uh, going for that honeycomb pattern and I think with the the way that the uh, the glass kind of cascades down that'll give another another extra look there that'll make things I don't know I don't know how to say it but I'll just say it makes it look nice makes it look nice and uh, once I get underway with this whole uh, centerpiece here I promise you it will look good it will look good but actually that's gonna be it for this episode um, I was counting off the time of uh, the recordings that I have and it turns out uh, it's not that short of an episode but um, in terms of content I hope it's okay for you guys uh, I know that I'm working on a bunch of stuff right now and you know I, I know you guys say don't worry about it but I feel I should offer it at least to you guys but yeah that's going to be it for this episode um, look for the new survival series that should be the next episode that comes out after this one uh, looking forward to getting getting going on that um, really has been inspired by your comments and I really thank you for that um, it's something that I'm really excited to get started but um, for the next episode of surviving creatively look forward to getting this into the main world so yeah don't forget to hit the like button if you so choose leave a comment down below because I love interacting with you guys and if you're new to the channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Keeps you up to date on everything that goes on in it. So that's it for me. Always remember, keep your head up. And I'll see you in the next one.